Hello and welcome to this web presentation, Dark Sky Friendly Lighting. This is part of Marlborough Dark Skies Fest at Home and it's going to go through the do's and don'ts for homes and small businesses. Those small businesses could be pubs, restaurants, schools, um, small industrial or warehouse units. I am Bob Bohannon. I am president of the Society of Light and Lighting 2020 to 21. I'm a lighting designer, a lighting consultant, and I also teach exterior lighting. So what are we going to talk about? Well, first things first, why should we control light pollution? Well, light pollution is unnecessary and it impacts on our environment. If you've got a neighbor with a huge floodlight on the front of their garage, which is putting light through your windows, you know it upsets you. Uh, we could also talk about the fact that if it's affecting your sleep and with all the research on circadian lighting, that's not a good thing. Any light directly in a place into the sky, that's a waste of energy, so we shouldn't be doing it. Spill light affects bats and insects. Uh, if the insects are being attracted to the light, then that's where the bats aren't going to be, so they can't eat the insects. And of course, the whole point of what we're talking about today, the Dark Skies Fest, is that sky glow reduces your view of the stars. Again, if you're in a bright lit area with a lot of sky glow and lit clouds, you can't see the sky. So let's go through some of the, a little bit of tech some of the angles. If we have a street light outside of our house, then we want to be lighting the road and we want to be lighting the pavements either side of the road. Anything beyond the road or anything behind the column towards your house onto your garden, well, that's waste light. It's not really delivering the road and pavement lighting that you're paying for. But anything above the horizontal, anything up into the sky, well, that's creating light pollution, that's creating sky glow. A certain amount of light also bounces off the ground and into the sky. Now, how do we commonly see light pollution and sky glow? Well, as you know, if you're driving out in the country area and you're approaching a town, what used to be that sort of orange cloud in the sky when it was sodium lights and now it's increasingly a white cloud in the sky from LEDs, that's sky glow. If you live in a brightly lit area, you can't see the skies. If, therefore, control your lighting or go to somewhere in the northwest of Scotland or, you know, a dark sky park, increasing the South Downs are getting good at this. So, you know, let's look at this more as a local area to our house and our garages. Um, how are we going to do it? So we have the road. That's not our responsibility. That's the street lighting. This is lighting you're going to deliver. If we say put a floodlight above our garage to light our driveway, Anything which is going beyond the horizontal, that's light pollution. We just want to light the ground. That's the real deal. Light the ground. Anything into your neighbor's windows, that's obtrusive light. That's spill light. Anything into the sky, that's sky glow. And if we look in front of this house, they, these guys are lucky enough to have a row of trees and beyond that is fields and maybe a bat flyway. If our light is going past those trees, where those bats are, that's going to affect them. So let's look at a rogues gallery. Why does this often go wrong these days? Well, these are sort of the LED floodlights you can commonly get from the DIY sheds and wholesalers. And to be frank, they're not really very good at all for limiting light pollution. Um, what I'm looking at here, this little yellow dot, that's that's a big LED and the alternative where you've got a series of uh, smaller LEDs. They have no optics, they have no lenses, they just have a front glass. These will give you a beam angle of 120 degrees. Sounds good, but I will show you in a minute what this means. If you put this on your garage or on your house or on the side of your pub or on the side of your industrial unit and you light it, aim it fairly sideways, yeah you think you're aiming at the ground, that 120 degree beam will tip a huge amount of light into the sky. Plus, those LEDs are very, very bright. They, they are really quite unpleasant for people viewing them. Let's look at another rogues gallery of what not to do. 
This here is a combined up and down light. They're incredibly fashionable. Um, they're kind of the go-to fitting now for quite a few people if they want to put a, house, a light on the front of the, their house. Um, you see them frequently inside, outside pubs and restaurants. You know, it's what the electrician will give to you if you ask for a design light fitting. But why? Because all of the up light component is going straight in the sky. So if you buy the downward version, that's good. If it has a little sensor in here, which turns the light on only when you need it, and when there's movement, that's better. If it has an upward component, really, I would not recommend you do that. Now, here it is. Here's one on your garage. Here it is, lighting your, your, where you want to park your car, where you want to get out, where you want to lock the car and walk away to your house. What is this doing up here? It's lighting your wall, but mainly it's lighting the sky. So, yes, light your drive. No, don't light the sky. Keeping on with our rogues gallery. If you have bulkheads or any of those sort of circular or spherical globe fittings with just a, a diffusing glass or plastic, they've got no light control whatsoever. They just tip light everywhere. They're maybe not the most powerful, but when light's left a fitting, it doesn't stop it just keeps spreading out if you don't believe me look at a you know go out in the countryside see a you know a floodlight on a farmer's barn you can see it from miles away absolutely miles it just keeps going whereas if you use a fitting with louvers or a refractor stack to light downwards onto the ground that's much more beneficial so yes Put a lid on your fitting, put louvers on your fitting. These are the sort of things you want to be getting. And no, don't have things which are globes or just blobs on the wall, just circular bulkheads. They tend to put a lot, just as much light into the sky and just as much light you know, out into the uh, area than it ever does onto your ground. So the next question is, what else can I do? Well, it's not that difficult time switch lights off that are not being used seems sensible brightness think how many lumens you need and use as little light as possible we don't buy lights in wattage anymore that came from the hostile tungsten tungsten hydrogen lights that we used to use now the unit of light is the lumen if you've got something in your in your local DIY shed, it's four and a half thousand lumens. That's equivalent to one of those big, powerful, three hundred watt tungsten floods that we, you know we used to use. You don't need that much light. Nothing like it. Aiming, aim your fittings where you need them. Aim them on the ground. Aim them on the path. If you've got garden lighting, aim them at the garden. Don't aim them into the sky. Yes, you could use the hedges to cut your light off or a fence. Just be intelligent, but make certain it's not above the horizontal. Make certain it's not into the sky. Sensors. Use passive infrared sensors, when, which only switch on when your lights are needed, where they sense movement, and they only switch on after dark. If you want to keep with automatics, use timers, where they turn the lighting off maybe late at night when nobody's about. Also, and if you can find this out, colour. Don't use cold white LEDs. You'll see them on the packet, they say 5000K or 6000K. The K stands for Kelvin, it's a colour temperature. Um, cold white LEDs reflect light into the sky, and they're also disliked by bats. Um, the only reason why LEDs frequently are cold white is not because it's good, it's because it's cheaper to make powerful versions in those colors it's not because humans particularly like them if possible use 2700 to 3000 K you know that color it's what you typically have inside your home it's kind of tungsten color or if you're in an amber if you're in a rural area um, with lots of bats around use amber LED though those are quite rare at the moment talking about bats again don't light bat flyways the bats don't like it and if you're attracting the insects away from a bat flyway towards your lights, the bats are going to starve. 
absolutely crucially, do not light the entrances and exits to bat roosts. Some bats just won't come out if there's any light on the entrance or exit. Next one, where can I get more information? If you've enjoyed this, you found it interesting, well, there's several people you can talk to. You can talk to the Society of Light and Lighting, and there's a website. The Institute of Lighting Professionals get very involved in street lighting. They have some good information on obtrusive light. Uh, there's the Commission for Dark Skies. Um, there's a link to the British Astronomical Association. And also there's a campaign for protection of rural England, CPRE. All of these places can give you much more information. Um, but you don't have to work alone. You can work as a community. The town of Moffat in southwest Scotland became a dark sky town by implementing a town wide strategy. It was a really, really good piece of work. It was very practically done. They first dealt with all the street lighting and then, well, basically, you know, the consultant who helped them sat on a hillside looking down onto Moffat and he looked where the bright points were. And one by one, you know, the, the floodlight over the doctor's surgery and a, and a mis-aim fitting over there or the petrol station, they dealt with them. And then they showed the residents which fittings to get, which fittings not to use, which fittings to replace. And it became a dark sky town and the people can see the stars. Really for me, that's been a very, very quick run through. I'd like to thank Claire Harris for organizing this and, and getting this written and on, onto the web. I'd like to thank Neil Stevens for the kind photographs um, from Marlborough Town, uh, Town Center. My contact details are there. I wish you luck. Maybe we can meet again next year um, face to face. And it'd be really, really good to see dark skies over Marlborough. Thank you very much.